Welcome to Man vs. Meeple, the show where we talk about all things board game related. Welcome to our new set. We're going to be talking about Gen Con 50, which is now just a week away. Yeah. Are you guys ready? I'm uh, really ready. It's been a long year waiting for this. It's so huge. I mean, they've sold out. This is huge. Yeah, it's this never is the happened. first time, right, that it's ever sold out. Yeah, this I would have crazy. never imagined that even being possible. It never really entered right. my mind. And I know it's been in like the mid 60s in the past. Mm -hmm. What do you think the sellout number is? I have no idea. I, have, I don't it's know. It's gotta be 65,000, 70,000. It can't be much more than that, right? Well, they did, like they opened up all the stadium this year. Yeah. Which makes me very worried too. I mean, Gen Con is my, by far my favorite convention, probably for the fact that it's in our own backyard, right? I mean, right. This will be my 22nd time going to this convention, but it's been nice the past 10 years that we can just Leave our house. Oh yeah. Right. And drive thirty minutes. <laughs> yeah. Get to the convention, then drive home afterwards. Right. Which makes me worried that if they have sold out, and Indianapolis being such a small city, what are they going to do in the next couple of years? Are they going to once the lease runs out? Are they going to move? Are they going to go out west? Yeah, where I don't you're know. Seeing, like, that's Comic that's the and debate. All other I mean, uh, big conventions. This is the largest convention in Indiana right now. Yeah. Right. Easily. Oh yeah. Oh, easily. Well, even expanding into the into Lucas Oil Stadium which if you're not from here is where the Indianapolis Colts play football. You know, you think, well, we have the space, what's holding it back from, you know, making it bigger or th is this going to be capped every year when more people want to come? Yeah, so I that'll be interesting to see what happens. My guess is that they could probably utilize the space that they're using now maybe a little bit better. A little bit more like what they've done at Essen where you have like four different buildings all offering mm -hmm. exhibit space. The problem with that is that they've already expanded. Uh, two years ago, they've opened up that back section and they got rid of the uh, the play area and moved it to the side. So now the only place to go is Lucas Oil Stadium. Right. But right now they're using that for other types of events. Uh, they're yeah. using it for right. a dungeon and some other type of thing. Well, and this so. year they're gonna have a Gen Con 50 like museum sort of yeah, thing which is over awesome. there as well. Yeah, that's, that's very really, really cool. cool. Yeah. Supposed to have some really interesting artifacts there th from throughout the years, mm -hmm. which would be really cool to see. Yeah. We're gonna walk you guys through our most anticipated Gen Con titles. We wanna keep it short and succinct, so we've come up with top fives for each of us. There's a lot of games that we've played though over the past month that led up to Gen Con. A lot of them that are on our channel right now that we've yeah. already reviewed and previewed, and even probably about another half dozen more that we'll have up prior to the convention. So it's hard for us to go and look at the list when a lot of these games we've already played, our reviews are already out for some of these, we'll come back at the end of our top fives and talk about yeah. them at that time. We'll definitely want to tag those to some degree, but like Jeremy said, we've already played them a little bit, and yeah. it's hard to look forward to something we've played three times in the last week. Yeah. So we're looking forward to the stuff that we haven't Still seen. Still great games, though. Yeah. All right, are you guys ready? Let's yeah. do this. We're going to start with you. You're number five. <laughs> All right. My number five is uh, Moa by Martin Wallace. I haven't had a chance to play it yet at all. I haven't even seen it in person. But you say Martin Wallace, and mm -hmm. I'm on board. <laughs> yeah. I'm a huge fan of his games. I mean, Brass is just fantastic. Right. I know this is d definitely different from what he's done in the past. It has a playful look to it. The mm -hmm. artwork's like a, almost childlike. Which is weird because it's based on like a historical event with the occupation of New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, and yeah. and the birds that that you take oh, take on, like you take control of these birds, are supposed to be the native tribes that were basically. <laughs> but he he's made it more playful. I mean, it's birds, you know, under, under invasion from these mammals that have come in, and, and tried to take the land. So it's area control, huh? Uh, and it's hand management. You're playing cards from your hand to control these areas and keep the mammals at bay. And that's how you score your point. Yeah. 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 It reminds me yeah. of last year when he, he was involved with Via Nebula, which is also uh, more yeah. sort of family-friendly Martin Wallace oh, game. Oh, that's, that's that was right. a true, yeah. Game yeah. When that came out. Yeah, Mo is very similar in, in art style yeah. to that. So I'm, I'm interested to see how it plays. I don't think it's on sale, but I believe they'll have demos of it set up at Gen Con. Very cool. Very cool. What do you have? All right, my uh, first one is Affliction uh, Salem 1692. Uh, when I was going through the BGG list, which I think most of us yeah. got our games from, I'm flipping through and I saw this, and uh, it, the cover looks fairly just general. Uh, and I was like, oh, this is interesting. Obviously, it's about the Salem Witch Trials. I started digging into it. It was a Kickstarter last year, but it's going to be for sale at Gen Con. And it's a worker placement type game. What I, one thing I love about this game that I really want to try is that it actually teaches the history. It's actually historical. There are no witches in this because there were no witches in that sale. <laughs> you love historical games. I like love you, it. Like, you, you know, last year Black Orchestra yeah. just hit a nerve with both of us. It was yeah. just awesome and it taught history. This one yeah. does too. It uses hmm. all the same real people that were involved in that town. 
you're arresting people, you're accusing people, you're also trying to take people to protect them and your family. Victory points are gathered by who you've arrested, who you've protected. And so this game just looked really interesting. It's like, like maybe 45, 60 minutes. So I definitely want to try this one. I haven't Great seen that one at all. 101. I yeah. love it. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and don't be confused. There's a lot of like uh, affliction titled games that are coming out in yes. the next, what, and a lot months? of And a lot of Salem witch trial games. Yeah, yeah. Right. there has Which been. There was some that came out a couple years ago. Yeah. New Salem, I remember, yeah. was one of them. And then affliction folklore. And yep. it's just a variety of them. And this there. one's by DPH Games. Cool. Yeah. What do you have? Number nine. <laughs> this is and it's not number N U it's N M B R nine. Yeah, be worried. Like, Do you think nine, nine games? <laughs> <laughs> number nine is my number five. Um, this game it's from Z Man and it's uh, we saw this at Gamma earlier yeah. this year just by accident yeah. and we thought whoa that looks really cool really well produced. This is a an abstract game where you're placing these numbered tiles which are literally tiles sort of in the shape of the numbers one through nine and. Each player, you draw a card, it shows the number that everyone takes. You take that number, you lay it down, and then over time you're, you're fitting these numbers together because mm. they're kind of, kind of a Tetris-y sort of vibe to it. But you're going to score points for the numbers on the, ne the second layer. So as soon as you have a base layer that can support other tiles, you can put other tiles on top. And the way you're going to score points is it's the number of the tile times the level that it's on. Oh, wow. So the bottom level is zero. But the first level is one. So if you put a nine successfully on the second level or the, the first top layer, that's nine points. Uh, if you get a nine on the next level up, that's going to be nine times two, so 18 points. So it's, and it seems like a pretty quick game because there's only, I think, two of each number. So it's, pro, I guess, 18 rounds-ish or something like that. Really cool looking, <laughs> simple, abstract game. I definitely want to pick it up. Yeah. Animal lesson, history lesson, <laughs> math lesson. <laughs> kind of, I have yeah. a coal lesson. <laughs> this one's called The Ruhr, A Story of Coal Trade. This is the second in the coal series. This one's coming from Capstone. It is a worker placement pickup and deliver game, which also comes with an expansion called The Ohio Valley. Now, it's a really cool looking game. Now, you liked Hashbolt Neck. I which was, was a big the first fan of Hashbolt Neck. My favorite thing about Ruhr is the fact that they've changed the name from Ruchafart. Yeah. <laughs> super oh, that's odd better. <laughs> yeah. All right. Going back to you, uh, Ryan, you have number four. Yeah. Uh, actually, my number four is one that was just recently announced. Kind of a surprise release. Uh, and that's Century Golem Edition. Ah. Uh, just, and we just heard about that today, I think, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah uh, Century Spice Road came out at Origins and was a huge hit. Yeah. Basically, it's a new skin. It's a new right. fantasy theme mm -hmm. right. with with these golems, which just looks so cool. I mean, the artwork is a huge draw for me, yeah. and I think I would come back to this one. I mean, Century looks great with the placemat. They're doing a brand new placemat yeah. for yeah, the Golem cool. Edition. Yeah, yeah, and so this is kind of a surprise release. A couple years ago, <laughs> they had originally announced yeah. Century as the same game but using two distinct themes. And it was an interesting conversation that we had at the beginning of the year when we were doing our top 10 most anticipated games yeah. of the year. That made your list. Yeah, because before, of, because, before the whole Plan B announcement. Right, because yeah. of how distinct that was. And our, our conversation was, would you go with the more Euro, traditional spice look, or would you go with the fantasy-based Gollum look? Yeah. So it'll be very interesting to see that now this game's been out for a couple months. Mm -hmm if people are going to gravitate towards it and just say, you know, I play the game, I like it, but I even like it enough to upgrade to the Golem Edition. Right, this is a huge cool surprise. Thing. I do think it's probably on their part kind of a good marketing idea yeah, to hold it back because I do think if you'd taken a survey, I'd say probably at least 7 out of 10 people were leaning towards the Golem Edition, mm -hmm. at least yeah. in the circles I've talked right. about it in. Right. So waiting and holding it back till now is probably a, a smart idea. They'll probably move some of these for sure. What you got? All right, number four is Unearth from Brotherwise oh. Games. Okay. Uh, you and I played that at yeah. Origins, yeah. and I really enjoyed it. It's just a, uh, it kind of be a little bit of a filler-esque type game. The artwork is amazing. Yeah. yeah. If you've ever played Great Monument -like. Valley, yeah. Yeah. the yeah. Exactly. app game, it's exactly. exactly what this art, and that totally is like, well, what's this? And that's why I wanted to play it. But you have these uh, cards out in front of you. They are ruins. Some stones get put on them. And then you're using dice. You have five dice. You're using these dice. Uh, each card has a number on it. So you're just trying to get up to the number that... Uh, that, that threshold of that, that die. That threshold. Yeah. And whoever has the highest number die will get that rune. 
But also there are stones that you can use. There's other cards that can build wonders with them. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of gamerish uh, a little bit, but it's a little abstract too. A little so abstract. It can be picked yeah. up from just about anybody that wants yeah, to. Yeah, it's play. really simple to yeah, play too. Yeah. I like the way the dice work too because mm -hmm. it's not just like we're all rolling dice and whoever has the highest. Right. You're adding the dice to these cards. Right. To, to until and it they reaches stay on that, there yeah, until they hit yep. that threshold. Until they hit that threshold. But if you roll low too, there's a little bit of a bonus, so it's right. not just oh, I rolled a two. Right, because you get these other cards that allow you to start mitigating yeah. dice or other actions you can take later on, which is really kind of neat too. Yeah, it's a really pretty rolling. game too. Very yeah. pretty. Oh, it's Unearthed. gorgeous. Yep. What you got four. Number my number four is photosynthesis. Uh, <laughs> this has been making the circles a little bit on the reviews. We haven't had a look at it yet, um, but it's a really gorgeous looking game from Blue Orange. Oh, beautiful looking I've and. Seen it. Yeah. It's kind of been, I've heard it described as an abstract, but with a little bit more to it. Like there's an economy of sunlight mm -hmm. that you're using. Yeah. And the board has this big sort of quarter section of sun that moves around the board and casts light on the trees. And depending on what trees you've planted, there's small, medium, and large trees. Some of them will cast shadows. And if other trees are in the shadow, they won't get the sunlight. So you can kind of, from what I understand, Position your trees so that it might cast mm -hmm. shade on yours so that you're not getting sunlight right, you're not from growing. certain angles. Yeah. Yes. Gorgeous looking thing. Yeah. And I, I haven't seen a picture of the board fully done, but once everyone has their trees on there, it'll look pretty cool, I Seems think. Seems like the perfect game for a lazy Susan and a light bulb in a dark room. <laughs> <laughs> you can spin oh, right. it the casting of the shadows. That would be cool. All That's right. the deluxe version. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my number four is The Hunt for the Ring. Uh, this is from the designers of War of the Ring, which is one of my favorite games of all time. <coughs> and then Letters from Whitechapel, which is, in my opinion, the best deduction game of all time. This one is it got a really unique mechanism in it. One player plays as the hobbits. The other players, up to four players, can play as the Nazgul, and they're hunting the hobbits down. But it plays in two very distinct phases. You have phase one, which takes place from the Shire to Bree, and then once the hobbits complete that and aren't corrupted, you flip the board over and you go from Bree to Rivendell. Very mm. intrigued by this game. I, it's not going to be for sale, but it is going to be in demo form. And love the design. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would have been shocked if this game was not on your list yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. They're, saying, they're saying October. So We saw it at Origins. We saw very rough. It was a work prototype. in process yeah. Yeah. version at Origins. It looked awesome. Yeah. All right, back around to you. Three. All right, uh, number three for me is Star Wars Rebellion Rise of the Empire from Fantasy Flight. This will right be, yeah. be big. This, Very I mean, big. Star Wars Rebellion, just, I knew I was going to love it. Yeah. But what I didn't know was just how thematic it was going to feel. Absolutely. And if you've played Rebellion, you know what that's like. You, yep. know, you, you know, you get to be the rebels, you know, outwitting the Empire at every turn. Well, the new one brings in Rogue One. So that's awesome. you've got characters from Rogue One. You've got um, events from Rogue One. So you stealing Death Star plans and, and things like that and using some of the characters from that movie mm -hmm. um, added into your Star Wars experience. Yeah. So it, it's just going to add a ton Rebellion's of cool Rebellion's a fantastic game. If you guys haven't had a chance to play this, you need to play it if you're a Star Wars fan at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah. Haven't I haven't played, played it. it. Oh, man. And, 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 I, and I said this before when we were talking about it. I can't remember what video, but it does for Star Wars what War of the Ring did for Lord of the yeah. Rings. It's so deeply thematic. You feel like you're in the universe. The cards make sense. The gameplay makes sense. It's a it's a perfect mix of the license and a game. Yeah, I've never had a game end anticlimactically. Exactly. Right. Every game I've played has ended in and some kind of cool maneuver. We, right. we played like four games one day. <laughs> yeah, in we, one one we day. Didn't stop. It was, it was it awesome. Was, it was amazing. What do you have? <laughs> All right, my number three is it's called The King's Will. It's from No uh, idea what this is. Blackfire. No. I. I've seen it uh, on a couple of different posts and it looks intriguing. I also don't know a whole lot about it, but what I do know about it is basically it's set in the uh, 10th century or so in the Ottoman Empire, from what I understand, something like that. I or think Gary's making this yeah. up as he goes. I might be making a little bit of this stuff. No, really. But basically you have kings, okay, but then they had s servants like dukes or earls or whatever who were going around and, and, and they're the ones who are trying to, to gain the king's favor. So you do that yeah. by trying to find what is the king's will. So the king's will are hidden victory conditions. Oh, interesting. interesting. And yeah. so you're moving around and uh, you're trying to find out what are the victory conditions. There's also, you also have some that are known to you that also will help you for your own personal scoring. Huh. It just it just looks super intriguing. And well, I think it's some... Um, the concept of trying to figure mm -hmm. out victory conditions, I don't right. know if this is what you're talking about, but if, 
if there's like hidden information that's victory conditions, yeah. yes. and you have to play some of the game to try to figure some of those out. That's a there's cool a lot of well, games that use that type of mechanism where everybody is dealt conditions, and right. sure. you will get those sure. at the end. And you can get also what other people have, but you have no idea. I'm wondering right. if it plays like that at all. Well, there is a little bit of engine building. The main mechanism is uh, similar to Puerto Rico, where you take an action, but everyone else will Follow. get to take a part of that okay. action. Mm -hmm. all right. And you also get to build some buildings and also gain knowledge, which allows your actions to be even more powerful. Is this so for you sale? Gain, I believe this will be for sale. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say right now, that's probably the biggest surprise of our evening here doing yeah, this. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've not heard of that one at all. And I did a lot of digging. What do you have? Three. My next one is Spiel nominee, uh, Quest for El Dorado. Yeah, I heard yeah. some good stuff about it this. It did one. not win. Yeah. But it, it's a it's a family style game, and this is from Ravensburger, who's no stranger to Two that list. Two abstracts for you and a family game. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, 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 I love the idea of these things. It's not the kind of games that we play a lot of, yeah. but uh, this one sounds really good, and it sounds like it has a little bit of meat to it. Uh, it almost like a relative of Clank. So it's a deck builder mm. to first and foremost, mm -hmm. and you're using your cards to basically maneuver your person on this ever-growing map of tiles in the quest for El Dorado. So you're mm. all trying to find El Dorado and move across this map. But there's lots of things on the map that you can kind of go over to and get sidetracked on, get more cards, have access to calling some cards, things like that. They say it's extraordinarily accessible. Obviously, it's a family game. Um, but it looked really cool, the way the uh, they display the cards out. There's like a set of cards everyone always has access to. And then there's a big sort of like tableau of cards that gets, uh, I think, refreshed that has more unique and more powerful cards. Interesting. But yeah, fun yeah. little like family introduction to deck building, I think. Uh, my next game is Pandemic Legacy 2. I have a kind of a thing going here where none of the games I have are for sale except the rear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well anyway, Pandemic Legacy 2. I think everyone's excited to play oh, yeah. this. Oh uh, yeah. It is <laughs> not, from my understanding, a continuation of the original game. It's a complete standalone. I don't know if it has any things that you take from the first game. I, into I think it. they would keep that a secret. Yeah, it's still very much a secret. There's still hidden boxes in the game, but from what I understand, there's now floating stations in the ocean called havens, hmm. and there are some cities that some of the largest cities in the world survived from the original pandemic. So you're kind of using your havens to go back to work with these original cities that are still alive. That's about all we know. I mean, and it looks completely like, like a whole different layer. It looks on, like right? a completely different pandemic game hmm. that we were used to. The thing I've said about pandemic pandemic legacy, the reason why it was so good is because it was built over a structure of an existing pandemic game, which is a fabulous cooperative game. I think this is wholly different than the original mm -hmm. pandemic. So it'll be interesting to see if the gameplay portion of it stands out. We already know the legacy portion was awesome mm. in that game. Oh, so. yeah. There's even rumors that there might be scratch-off areas on the board. Yeah, That'd be that's awesome. what it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what board. That's what it you can like. do to alter the gameplay state yeah. that yeah. give those people those water cooler moments where they do something and they're like, I can't believe we just did that. And it's changed the gameplay dramatically. Yeah. That'd be awesome. What you got, two? Yeah, this one is one that we've talked about a lot. I know you've reviewed it. I, I know everybody's game. heard it, but it's viral. Uh, surprise hit for me of this year yep. so far. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it seems so simple when you look at it, but then you start playing it, and there's that mixture of hand management and area control where you don't get your cards back that you played until two rounds later. Yeah. So you can find yourself in these positions where you need to make moves on the board, but you can't because you played those cards last round. <laughs> yeah, right. You have to, you know, try to work around that. And this is the Dice Tower Essential game yeah. Yeah. for this year, I think, uh, and they, they did a great job picking this one. Yeah, this it's one would have easily been on my list as well had we not, I mean, we're very familiar with it by now. Yeah, played I've played and taught this I don't know how many times. Mm -hmm. I really, really love this game. This is one, if, if there's a short list of games that you want to run and get, like I don't know how many copies of any of these games they're going to have. I think yeah. some of them mm -hmm. have announced this, but Viral would be one of those ones that I would go grab. Yeah. I think this is a great, accessible area control game uh, with a fair amount of meat on it, too. A lot of decisions to make. Yeah, it's very thematic. I mean, I, I love... It's beautiful. Thematic, yeah. beautiful looking. Yeah. It's beautiful looking. It's got a really unique and interesting theme. I'd say it looks a little juvenile graphically. Mm -hmm. uh, if that turns you off, give it a try because yeah. I think it's worthwhile. But you know sure. what? I think that helps the game also in the fact that, you know, p some people don't like Take That games. Mm -hmm. And there's a little bit of Take That. It's area control. There's going to be sure. some Take yeah, That. Absolutely. But it does it in such a fun accessible yeah. way. I mean, you know, 10 year olds can pick up this game and have a ton of fun with it. Yeah, It's a great, great game. It is yeah. a great game. Gary, number two? 
Okay, my number two is another game that uh, you all, you guys have reviewed. I just, I love it a lot. I, we played it at Origins. We first saw it as Whistle Stop from Bezier Games. Uh, I just played this again the other day. I'm really excited to get my own copy. Yeah, yeah. But it's just, I love just, it's tile laying. It's some route building and just a little bit of pickup deliver. But it's just, there's so many decisions that you can yeah. make. And also has that little bit of a, a timer a aspect mm -hmm. with, the, with the rounds. And the last time I played, you know, I'm playing, I'm like, I'm doing it. Oh, I'm about out of rounds here. <laughs> yeah. And I still got a train down over the other side. So yeah. it's it's really all these decisions you get to make. And I really enjoyed it. And the people I've played with are loving it I, too. I love games where it, the rule set is so small and you open the box and you're like, there's not a whole lot here, right? There's there's mm -hmm. a minimal amount of components in the game. There's a minimal amount of rules in the game. But once you start playing it, is it's a robust engine that you're trying to build, right. and there's a lot of decisions to make. I love those style of games. And there's some cool combos you can make with that Absolutely. in that game oh, yeah. too, mm -hmm. that are just really. You fun. can also score your. I've played that a few times now, and the number of ways different people have won that game mm -hmm. is fairly significant. Really, really good game. That like viral. Mm -hmm. This is one of those games I would also rush to get yeah. because it's it's going to be a fast. huge hit this year yeah, at Gen I think Con. So. Yep. Two. My number two is Ex Libris. This mm -hmm. is from Renegade, and we've heard a lot about this over mm -hmm. the last several months. Um, got a little, not a little early peek at some of the prototype. Yeah. This game is a worker placement with sort of evolving worker spots with tiles that come out that act as these things. And the whole theme and setting is this sort of like, <laughs> great library sort like of thing. gnomish library. Yeah, right? the gnomes <laughs> run this library, which I love the concept. I've been yeah. thinking about the concept of a great library themed game. And I really love the way this looks. The artwork is also very playful and cartoony, mm -hmm. which I love. Really looking forward to this one. If, yeah. you, if you haven't seen it, go check it out before Gen Con. This is another one, too. I think they're going to have probably we, limited yeah, quantities available. Yeah, we just got available. confirmation today that they will have them in. They're air freighting yeah. them in, so that's exciting. Awesome. That was going to make my list, too, but I didn't put it on there because I didn't want to cross too many times. <laughs> we know another person may have this. My number two is called Agra. It is area control worker placement game from Quinn Games. There's almost no information. There's not even a rule book on Except it. Except some Again, crazy pictures. It looks fantastic. Uh, the parts that I do know about it is that, as I said, it is uh, worker placement and has area control. It takes place in Agra, India. The cool hook to this one is that when you place your guys up on the board, they stay there from round to round until someone kicks you off. So it's one of those games where you're getting reoccurring benefits from them, and then people are going to have to move you off of those spaces for wow. them to, to come in. And it looks awesome. It looks and it fantastic. Looks, it looks like one of those games where when you look at it, you're like, this, this is so complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and I love games like that. Like Great Western Trail was one of my favorites. People walking by Great Western Trail look at the board and say, "I can't even tell you what's going on here." This, yeah. and looking at the board, I was like, "There's so many different <laughs> yeah, things going on." Agra looks like the quintessential Euro East. Yeah, yeah, Euro totally, yeah, yeah. Totally like, Euro. and it has got all these crazy components. But, this one component is like stadium style, style <laughs> seating sort of thing that like yeah. looks almost Your like pieces going on explosion. It, yeah. it reminds yeah. me. Yeah. We're yeah. seeing so, that more and more. I think with Euros that. Are, that are so dripping with theme. It's, yeah. it's kind of a new trend. I really like it. Yeah, yeah. we do too. I definitely yeah. want to demo that. Yep. All right. Well, my number one, um, we just talked about a little bit, was is Whistle Stop. <laughs> I'm with Gary here. Whistle Stop was great. I mean, I was yeah. looking forward to it at Origins already. And then when we sat down to play it, I was like, this it just clicked. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the tile laying, the resource management of having to maintain enough coal to keep your train going. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you have to make these decisions where you might sacrifice one train or like move one train down a route that's not great so that you could set up your other trains for better moves which is a crazy cool idea yeah. I, I love the way that the board builds itself yeah. and, and interacts you know with yeah the, i love the graphics in the game yeah too. that's I mean, what the, i wanted the, to the say design and the way mm -hmm. that the, they did the graphic design it's, it's very super clean i want to say it's super clean and minimalist but it's still really evocative of yeah this thing is going to be one of those games that's on a store shelf it, people are going to pick it up Absolutely. for sure this is a beautiful beautiful game yeah all right well, and my number you. one uh is ex libris <laughs> Just like you, like you. My uh, expectations for this game. Yeah, yeah, we do. Here. Don't yeah. let us down, Renegade. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Seriously, Renegade's just killing it. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, they've had another great year of good games come out from Sentient. Yeah. You know, to Flip Ships. Yeah. Fox in the Fox, Fox in the, in the Forest. forest. Yeah, it was great. It's great, and I think yeah. this game is just going to add right on top of it. Just a little bit more about Ex Libris. It's just you know, you, you got card drafting. Yeah. You got worker placement, yep. and from what I understand is you know you put. 
every round you're going to put your people out and then those will change the placement will change for the next round mm-hmm. so there's gonna be a lot of just crazy it sounds like neat actions going all around all the time and you know just building up your personal library to become the grand yeah, the great I, librarian i can't wait to see i still haven't seen like a full picture of the entire components I splayed either. out i've seen i've just, just seen the box cover we've right seen now. pieces <laughs> here, the here and there components and, and yeah and the box stuff. cover is awesome but i, I yeah. want to see that back of the box picture of the board right. and the components and everything laid out yeah we'll right. be just looking for this one in Gen Con. yeah what you got my number one Terraforming Mars, Hellas and Elysium. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I, you guys know I'm a huge Terraforming Mars fan, and I've, I'm dying. This couldn't not be my number one for sure. Now, I know this is, you know, some people are like, well, it's just a couple boards. But um, I talked to them back at Origins, and the, the way that these games are themed around these boards is really cool because it changes things up. You know, it takes advantage of the different climates of these different regions of Mars. So it kind of changes some of the temperature mm-hmm. goals, maybe, and things like that. Yeah, this is one of those games where I'm going to be lining up for every expansion that they <laughs> yeah, put out. I, I want to steal the thunder here, too, but it, there was recently announced or leaked uh, Terraforming Mars, the next expansion. Do you remember what that was oh, called? Venus Next? Venus Next. Yeah. Have you guys seen the artwork in that game? Yeah, it looks amazing. It looks amazing. Oh, like, really? They upped the scale of the artwork. It looks really <laughs> Maybe good. Maybe they were listening. Yeah. Yeah. They were yeah. listening. That's yeah. right. Well, what's I mean, great, one thing um, about the Terraforming Mars boards that, that make it so much cooler is that the awards and milestones change. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Just extends the life of the game. Yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah absolutely. Sure. My last game, again, is a game that's not available. It's coming out at Essen. <laughs> And we, I could not not mention it. It's a Stefan Feld game. It's called Merlin. It's a point salad game. Uh, it looks, again, beautiful. However, it uses a rondo. And when you look at this board, and I'll throw up a picture of this, the way that the dice are organized in the center of the, of the board reminds me of Twa. Yeah. And that's why mm-hmm. I picked it, because I get some shades of Twa in that. It may not play anything like Twa. So but I don't care because it's Rondo. <laughs> Note to publishers, make games with a bunch of dice in the middle of the board. And you'll <laughs> have Joking Jeremy on it. High and throw dice in it. Right. Well, I love seeing a Rondell used well. And this one's by Queen, too, So which is kind of strange. I don't think Feld's ever released a Queen hmm. game I don't before. think so. You know, this one, I, I wasn't sure whether this was going to be at Gen Con, or I definitely would have put this on my list, too. There's been some talk that it is. I've read some forum posts that they're going to have a work copy there i'm gonna hunt it down oh i'll definitely demo this for sure yeah absolutely what a cool theme too yeah yeah for sure yeah merlin so as we promised let's talk a little bit about just the games we've played we've already talked about whistle stop we've already Mm -hmm. talked about viral Mm -hmm. um i've got another what do you have codenames duet yeah we uh i know some of us uh, you're not you're you like it but not maybe as much as code names because it's I, not doesn't have the party it doesn't thing. have the party aspect to it for sure i i think this is my new favorite version of code names oh, because i yeah. can play it with two players like specifically that it makes it more of a gamer's game this thing is going to be available and this is the first it's available it's going to uh, i think it'll blow out i mean yeah. they'll probably have a ton of copies I would imagine but they, this one will do well speaking and it's of blowout too Legend of the Five Rings is oh yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah they're doing a gonna be huge, huge release tournament yeah we just got our review copy of that we haven't had a chance to play it there's a whole bunch of stuff up on this wall that we put up Fate of the Elder Gods is coming out mm-hmm. yeah. for Kickstarter. yeah we We've played a that a couple play. weeks ago that was a lot of fun it's it was got fun. a lot of cool mechanics there's, a, yeah. there's some great Wasteland Express delivery service I think comes out of Gen Con that yep. does uh, this War of Mine which is getting really good yep. reviews a game up here, too, that oh, I yeah. cannot not mention, Bunny Kingdom. <laughs> yeah. This game is fantastic. Richard Garfield always makes good games. But this one has card drafting and area control, and it's done in a very light and whimsical theme. But it also has a ton of gameplay with the way that you draft these cards. One of the best drafting experiences I've had in a game. In that, yeah. Honestly, it's so much fun, and the decisions are so tough. Because you think you're doing one thing, and then you get this card, and you're like, oh, man, that looks really <laughs> good. Should I do that? And you're giving up other cards almost every turn. You're, yeah. you're passing up cards. You're handing them over to the next guy going, oh, man. I don't want him to I have I don't want him to have these, but I have to give them to him. Well, there were, there it's were such a fun experience. You, yeah, so. I want to play that again a little bit more because the first couple times we played it, we didn't, I didn't really get into the sort of keeping you guys in check sort of aspect of that game. Mm-hmm. I was just focused on what yeah. I was doing, and you guys had these massive <laughs> thieves. I think I'm pretty sure I came in last place. Yeah. Citadel's coming out from Passport. That's a oh, yeah. fantastic oh. uh, cooperative game. Summit, which is a really cool solo player, yeah. cooperative, mm-hmm. and mean. It is <laughs> really game. We have, Summit was super fun, and it, it is, was yes. super mean. Remember, because we played with the more of the, all the mean I cards. I still have nightmares <laughs> over, over playing Summit with you guys. <laughs> yeah. We, we got to play that co-op first. Trying to be on the mountain really good. Die. Yeah. 
You know, a couple I've been thinking about just real quickly. First is Sentient. Yeah, yeah, it's been out at a cool. couple cons this summer. They have sold out each time. Mm -hmm. It's a great dice game. Um, also, Werewords yeah. from Bezier. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If you want a good party game that's easily accessible by anybody, no matter if they've never played a game in their life, get Werewords. You have a lot of fun with that app. Yeah. And also a game that's been out since the beginning of the year, but it's got to be easily the, the, the top sleeper of the year is Ethnos. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know it's yeah. hard to Ethnos find. I'm sure great. Simon will have copies. But I have taught that game to multiple non-gamers, and two of them, two families, went out and bought them. One of them was a 60-year-old father. So oh. he was like, I love this yeah, game. Yeah, I would it say if, super you, fun. if you haven't had a chance to pick Ethnos up, and you're at Gen Con and you see it, don't just, miss the opportunity. Just pick it up. It's well, going to go you out. You know, and speaking of Simon 2, they're going to have, well, Godfather's been out for a little bit, right. but that's going to be hard, a, It's been hard to find. It's been hard to find, and it's going to be have a huge presence at I, the show, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Plus, I'm sure they've got to have dem. They've got to be demoing Rising Sun, right? And probably Massive Darkness too. Which oh is yeah, well, yeah. And game. their Song of Ice and Fire. Game oh yeah, the, be I bet yep. they'll have huge They're demos of Song of Ice and Fire. All that, that miniatures game. Yeah. You know, another yeah. one from Asmodee, uh, the Splendor expansion. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Splendor. Mm -hmm. I mean, Splendor is in most people's game collection for yeah. at one point or another, and this expansion. Gives it a little bit more meat, I think, for some it's of the like people. Four expansions in there. It's right? Four expansions, and you you play each of them individually, but they do very different things. I was looking through the rules again. We got our uh, review copy of this recently. One of them makes it the game faster. Mm -hmm. One of them makes it a little longer, but has a lot more player interaction, so you can cool. mess with each other nice. quite a bit. Uh, the other ones do add some variable powers, so that you can achieve goals. And now I'll have this power because I got two greens and a red, mm -hmm. so I have this power I for like the rest that. of the game. And everyone can acquire that power, but there's powers that you can use throughout the game. You could use all four days, just going from booth to booth, Absolutely. trying what's not even out yet, and you use your whole Gen Con. I might not even make it to Gen Con this year, to be honest. Uh, we just got notification <laughs> that my number one most anticipated oh, game yeah. this year. The Seventh Continent has shipped, and I should have it <laughs> by Saturday, which is really bad because we have a ton of filming to do. Oh my that gosh! Week. I may not be at Gen Con. Is that not going? <laughs> is that not going to be at Gen Con? They're just sending out the Kickstarter. I have no right idea. Now? I'm so excited. Yeah, I don't know I'm if they're going. I'm so gonna... incredibly excited for that. I haven't heard there would be a Gen Con, but I know they've started shipping out backer rewards for that. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Also, guys, uh, tune in the Wednesday before Gen Con. We have a title that we're going to cover that we cannot talk about. It's going to be. Huge. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's unannounced. That's all I can say. Come in Wednesday. Come check us out at Gen Con. Find us. Uh, You're on a panel. Yeah, we yeah. will be on a panel. I'm not sure what day that is. We'll post it <laughs> in the comments. <laughs> you know. uh, we're doing a panel with the Dice Tower to talk about video media content in the board game industry. Uh, please come by and, and check out that panel. Um, say hi to us. Yeah, say yeah, hi to we'll us. Be, we'll be wandering, yeah. wandering around gaming for sure. Ryan. Yeah, we'll be around for sure. We're gonna be we're gonna be a little mix of work yeah. and a lot of demoing if we can get it in for sure. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. Thank yep. you, Gary. Always a Absolutely. blast. David, you're always here anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. Hope, hope you guys <laughs> like our new set. We spent a lot of time on it. You'll be seeing a lot of programming here, uh, and we will check you guys out next time. See you, Jincon. Bye-bye. Season 2 of Man vs. Meeple is sponsored in part by Cool Stuff, Inc. Cool Stuff, in stock at CoolStuffInc.com.